Hey everyone, my name is David Dunbar, or the Themeberg Evangelist. I think I will uh, talk about how to uh, make the most out of your next Central Florida vacation in the unlikely event of a hurricane. I am completely aware, just like Disney, Universal, and most people, that um, Florida does get hurricanes. I lived in Florida for over 26 years, almost 27 years, and I have had my fair share of hurricanes. Uh, almost four years ago, uh, and back in September of uh, 2017, a major hurricane came through Central Florida called Hurricane Irma, and it did over $5,000 of damage to my dad's property. Trust me, I get it. And if that's not bad enough, Disney actually closed their doors for a couple of days for it. Uh, almost everybody was closed in Central Florida during that time, which is why I always like to share on Facebook now, Never Forget 9-11, which, by the way, is 20th anniversary, is this year, and Never Forget Irma, because... Uh, Irma's been one of the probably the most devastating hurricanes so far. Uh, Irma was a five star, sorry, five ca category five ur hurricane. I'm sorry, that's what I meant to say. And it did devastations everywhere. In fact, the uh, whole eye went over Central Florida alone. And uh, I was driving up Highway 27 uh, like a day or two later, and I could see where I had been. I uh, saw the traffic lights all messed up and everything. It was crazy. Uh, just driving through Lake Wales. I think Lake Wales had it the ba the worst, from my understanding, aside from Miami. And uh, there were just trees all over the place, branches. Uh, my mom didn't even really want me out on the road. I think TJ ended up driving. Uh, there was billboards on the ground. It was almost impossible to drive. It was, a lot of places were still closed. TJ's uh, community was a total disaster. You have to go check it out sometime. I actually did some uh, YouTube footage of Hurricane Irma back about four years ago. Almost four years ago. Because it was in September of uh, 2017. So, yeah, I definitely get the whole hurricane situation. But uh, one of the very first things that you can do if... You know, you're in my situation, sorry, Itchy. And, um, you know, that hurricane just happens to be uh, passing through Central Florida long after you um, booked your vacation to Central Florida. The f very first thing that you can do is um, attempt to either get a refund on your tickets, which... That may not always necessarily work, but your next best bet is to try to get the tickets um, like made available for another day. Like, say, for example, Disney. Disney does not really do refunds on tickets. However, though, Disney is really good about saying, well, if you want on this for this ticket you bought, um, we'll give you uh, an additional year to use this ticket as long as you use it within a year. So Disney is pretty good about that. I don't know what Universal's policy is, unfortunately. I'm assuming it's about the same. But, um... Yeah, you always have that option. As far as, like, airlines go, if you're like me and you would rather fly, especially if you go by yourself a lot, um, some airlines, like Southwest, for sure... Uh, are pretty good about giving you uh, at least six months to use up your um, airfare. You can pretty much change your uh, airfare or you can cancel it and you can get your uh, money back onto your account or you can get it back as refundable airfare. So, like, right now I have about, like, as, like, air credit. So right now... I have roughly about $260 in air credit right now from Southwest, and only I can use it as it's attached to my information. And I have until the end of ne next April to use it, and since I don't plan on going back this year uh, due to financial reasons, 
and the fact that I'm inviting a friend here to Kentucky to visit me in December, since um, I never have anybody come and visit me, I'm always going and visiting everybody else, I figured it all... I'll invite someone up here instead, or invite someone here, just to, you know, switch it up a little bit, and that way I can stay here and work, too. Uh, and then I'll just fly down again next, at the end of next February, since I still need to use the airfare before it's gone, because I don't want to throw away $260, and I'm still going to Tennessee next year, which... I would drive there myself. It's like five, six hours, even though TJ was talking about driving all the way up here. And I said, well, that's not necessary because I can get there quicker than he can get here. <laughs> it literally would be so out of his way to drive all the way up here, pick me up, and then drive me down there. It would be so much easier just to meet there, especially since I'm only five, six hours away from there. And that's not even that bad at all. I can drive that by myself. That's easy. But, you know, I mean, TJ is just trying to be helpful, but he doesn't realize he's not helping himself at the same time. I think I did convince him. But, yeah, if you're one of those people that likes to fly down to Central Florida and your flight is interfering a hurricane, uh, just move it. Um... To another day. Some airlines are really good about it. That's why I like going with Southwest because of the fact that I can literally move my airline to another day if I usually have to give Southwest um, roughly about a week's notice or so that hey I, I'm going to use this flight or I'm not. Like right now just to make sure that I just don't have $270 worth of air credit just sitting in my uh, email somewhere and like literally in the back of my email I have a more recent um, purchase basically that same air credit uh, being used in November right now I'm not saying I'm going to fly down November I wanted to have it use somewhere until I got close enough to September and then I was going to turn around and I was going to change that information again to a date when I know for sure I'm going to use it. And then I would just have it sitting there pending for uh, the end of next February down to Orlando. And then hopefully by that point there will be a lot more round trip flights available. But, yeah, I mean, Southwest is definitely one of those airlines that is really good about letting you just change it whenever you want, which is nice. Uh, not all airlines are good about that. Um, if you are one of those people that drives and you haven't left yet and you happen to see, oh, there's a hurricane coming, do I want to go or not, um, you do have that option of driving down anyway, as long as you um, drive down to Central Florida early before the hurricane actually gets there, you have two things going for you. Number one is um, the parks are pretty much going to be dead empty, so you can go do whatever you want while you're in Central Florida, and um, you have plenty of time, like depending on how quickly you got there before the actual hurricane hits. Uh, hurricanes move at whatever pace they want, so you just have to stay uh, fo focused on your uh, news as much as possible. Uh, pay attention to those weather alerts. Uh, know when the uh, hurricane plans on making landfall. You definitely want to be out of there the day before. So, if you know you can get to Central Florida at least a few days before the hurricane arrives, then at least plan on getting there. Spend about a day, um, hanging around the park or around the parks or whatever, and then plan on leaving the next day. Make sure you leave early because um, there are going to be a lot of people evacuating. That is the one thing I do have to warn you. If you do plan on driving down to Florida, expect a lot of people to be on the roads, on the interstate, trying to get out of the state as fast as possible. Depending on the state of the hurricane. Um, not all hurricanes 
and tropical storms that go through Central Florida cause major evacuations. Uh, some of them only cause minor ones, and you can handle those. But if it's like a major, major uh, hurricane, you may want to just go ahead and cancel that trip to uh, Central Florida as the best as you can. And those are the ones when you definitely don't want to even go just for a couple of days. If it's a major enough one, um, try taking your vacation somewhere else. Go down to Central Florida another time or just reschedule your whole trip for another year. Like... I typically plan my Central Florida vacations during off-season so I don't have to worry about hurricanes. That's another piece of advice I can give you. Uh, try scheduling your vacations um, while hurricane season is not going on or uh, during cooler weather times. Uh, just know for a fact that hurricane season is from... Uh, June through December, sorry, late November every single year. But most hurricanes are at their peak between the months of uh, July through September. Um, even in September, yes, you can. You would be surprised how warm the Atlantic and the Gulf is. And a lot of hurricanes do spawn in both bodies of water. And not all hurricanes know go to Florida, but... In the event that a hurricane does spawn and it looks like it's heading towards Florida, then people do panic. Um, that's another reason why I say you can still probably do your vacation to Central Florida in the event, and in the unlikely event that a hurricane is heading towards Florida. It, it depends on where it's going. That's why I always encourage you to watch your weather pay attention to the hurricane's path. If the hurricane is headed towards the coast, you have nothing to worry about unless uh, you are planning on going to the east coast. Like, say, for example, a hurricane is planning on heading to the east coast. Well, you may not necessarily want to go to the east coast then. Uh, you might want to go to the west coast. Like, if um, a hurricane is heading towards the east coast, well, guess what? Everybody's going to evacuate to the west coast. That's the way... Um, people work whenever there's a hurricane that's about to hit one of the coast. If a hurricane was heading towards the west coast, guess what? Everybody's going to evacuate to the east coast. Uh, there was a hurricane that came through back a few years ago. And since I was living in Lake Wales at the time, and Lake Wales is literally in the dead center of the state, um, everybody was going from the west coast to the east coast. Or was it the other way around? I, I don't remember. But the point is... There was a lot of people that were passing through, and everybody was getting gas and all that fun stuff. And I think it was going to the West Coast, the hurricane, because I remember going to work, and a lot of people were not out and about on that side of the state, and a lot of people were definitely not heading that way, but, like, everybody was going east. And that's the way it works. That's the one nice thing about living in the center of the state in the event that a hurricane does happen to hit one of the coasts, because you're not going to get that much effects from it. And that's another nice thing about um, a hurricane hit, or another nice thing I should say about going to, like, Disney or one of the theme, Central Florida theme parks, in the event that a hurricane is about to hit one of the coasts, a lot of people are still going to leave. A lot of people are still going to either leave the state or go to the other coast where it's safer. Because a lot of people will not want to be at the theme parks in the event of bad weather. But actually, the worst that's going to happen is a lot of rain. Maybe a little wind. Uh, the most wind you're going to get is about 30 miles per hour in the event that a hurricane's going to hit one of the coasts. Even if it's a really bad one, you're still not going to get bad. Or you're still not going to get that bad. Because the majority of their hurricane is going to be sitting on one of the coasts. But you're actually safest in the middle of the state if the hurricane is hitting one of the coasts. So, uh, just keep that in mind if you were still planning on doing a vacation regardless. Like, well, the hurricane's going to hit one of the coasts, so I should be fine. Now, there, you know, there might be that one person that's listening to this or will listen to it. Um... 
and will uh, say to me, but David, like, what if the hurricane veers off or decides to change course and go towards the center of the state? That's a chance you're going to have to be willing to take. If you don't feel comfortable going down to Florida, even if the uh, hurricane's definitely going to aim towards the coast, then don't go. As I said, reschedule your trip. You can do that. Uh, just check with um, your airline company. Check with the theme park. See if you can get everything changed. Uh, most hotels are pretty good about rescheduling everything. I know Disney even will give you about a year to um, like use up your um, resort stay. I think well, maybe I'm getting that wrong, but I know for a fact that Disney usually is pretty good about giving you, or if you give them about 24 hours notice, they usually are pretty good about refunding your uh, money. I know also for a fact that if you cancel your Disney World uh, dining reservation more than 24 hours notice, you do not get charged whatsoever. Yes, you will unfortunately forfeit that amazing up opportunity, but it's not like there's not going to be the next time either. Um, pretty much any time you book something and you know you're booking it during hurricane season, always um, review everything before you officially submit the uh, information. Like, say, for example, when the hoopty do was going on before they got rid of it, um, in the event the hoop de doo was going on during hurricane season and Disney had to close down Fort Wilderness, for example, which means that would have had to close down, you would have had to read, can I get my money back on it if I uh, let them know in advance enough? Or would they give me my money back in the event that um, a hurricane came through Central Florida and uh, closed down any of the uh, outdoor areas. That's one thing I can tell you right now. And if this makes you feel a little better, in the event that a hurricane c does come through Central Florida and it actually does come through the center of the state, Disney, not only will they close their doors, but they also will um, evacuate anybody that's staying at Fort Wilderness. They'll evacuate everybody staying at the bungalows. And they will move them into more secure motels and they will not charge you for it obviously because you know even though you're getting a much lower uh, motel most of the time uh, they will put you into one of their uh, value resorts uh, Justin Scard was actually in central Florida when Ur came, sorry, Ur Irma came through and you know my heart goes out to him because of the fact that he had paid good money to stay over at the bungalows at the Polynesian Resort and Irma evacuated the uh, or Irma forced Disney to evacuate all of the bungalows and there was nobody there was no more room left in the actual Polynesian Resort but they had plenty of vacancy left over at Pop Century. Now Pop Century is a huge downfall from uh the bungalows but the uh, nice thing was Justin not only was he safe but also he didn't have to pay to stay the rest of his trip over at Pop Century yes it's a huge downfall that um, it, he probably got ripped off I don't know for a fact that Disney will reimburse you for not being able to use up your money's worth but Disney um, is pretty good about making sure that every or Disney is very good about making sure everybody's staying safe in the event that a hurricane comes through the uh, center of the state. So just keep that in mind as well if you do plan on staying at like the bungalows or um, Fort Wilderness and you know a hurricane's coming through, just keep in mind there is a 50 50 chance that the hurricane will be bad enough and might head towards Central Florida itself that Disney might have to evacuate. That is, like, the worst thing that Disney will do most of the time, and if they really feel like they need to, they will close down their uh, parks as well. I think when Hurricane Her Irma came through, 
they also closed down their resorts for a day or two. Which, that was the first time I had ever seen that. So, I don't know if Disney would ever do that again. But I do know for a fact that was probably the one and only time I've ever seen that happen. I know when uh, COVID happened, all of Disney was closed down. That includes the resorts, too. Like, when her, her when COVID first showed up. Um, yes, all of Disney was pretty much shut down for... Um, a co- I know Disney was shut down for quite some time. Like, a couple of months-ish somewhere around there but um I don't think it was at least a year I think it was only just a couple of months but you know anyways I hope that I was able to help you guys out um I know we are in hurricane season right now um obviously you know if you live up north you don't have to worry about hurricanes um every state has their problems every country has their problems um I live in Kentucky, which is a uh, tornado-prone state, but also it's more well-known for its flash floods. That is the inconvenience about living in Kentucky. You do get your flash floods quite often. And unfortunately, we do get the uh, odd occasional tornado. Uh, I think Florida actually does get more tornadoes, but I've never actually seen a tornado or had to deal with a tornado until I moved here which says a lot, and that was two years ago, sorry, was it, yeah, it was two years ago, now that I think about it, it's been that long, and the last time that a tornado came ripping through was out in Indiana somewhere, and that was only a few weeks ago, and I wasn't anywhere close to it, so I didn't even hear the tornado sirens going off or anything, but my good friend Danny Um, had tornadoes going through her area, so unfortunately she had to go hide in the basement. I was actually able to stay out in the uh, actual house itself. I think that was right around the time when I first got um, forced to stay locked up, or that was around the time when my roommate Zane went out to uh, California to see his... um, friends. It it was definitely within the past month for sure. I just don't remember officially when, but yes, we do have tornadoes. We do have flush floods. That's probably the worst thing that we have to deal with. Um, Florida can actually be a really nice state to visit if you go during the right time of the year. You don't have to worry about um, really bad, severe weather in central Florida. If you visit between the months of November through early March. Um, After that, unfortunately, the weather starts getting severe again. You will still have the occasional um, thunderstorm that will hit central Florida between November and March. Uh, Your chances of seeing a thunderstorm are a lot higher in the months of February and March than they are in November through January. Those are actually really nice months to visit Central Florida as far as weather-wise goes. But I personally believe that the nicest months of the year to visit Central Florida actually are September and October. Even though September is still uh, hurricane season, uh, most of the time it is very nice to visit Central Florida in September. And then... er, the first part of November, and then uh, as far as the beginning of the year, uh, January and the majority of February are some of the nicest times of the year to visit um, Central Florida as well, because it actually does not get that cold in Central Florida. Um, I've had people from further north than me uh, be willing to go to the beach in the 50 degree weather. I um knew, um, or whenever my, uh, family from Canada would come down, they would be wearing shorts and they would be out in the water, uh, despite, um, the, uh, weather being a lot cooler down there, or, or, well, I should say the weather not necessarily being suitable for, um, swimming in, but they didn't care, because to Canadians, it was still warm, because, 
Canada gets very, very cold during the winter. Um, we had actually a really bad winter this year. So when um, it started warming me up, it felt so nice. And I should have known if we're going to have a really cold winter, that means we're going to have a really hot summer. <laughs> so now I'm kind of missing the cold weather again. But at the same time, I don't want that much snow again either. I'm, that's kind of like the state I'm at right now. Like, I'm really glad that we don't have snow right now, but at the same time, it's so hot outside, and with the AC being broken in the house, I just kind of miss the uh, cooler weather. Now, it is actually really nice outside right now, so I'm going to go outside and finish mowing the lawn. And I will see you guys uh, tomorrow evening between 5 and 7 o'clock. And I will do two more vlogs. Another uh, How I Met Kay and TJ vlog. I actually did look. And I went to Pandora for my very first time the day after my orientation. So the day after traditions. Which means that I will be discussing kind of why I got hired at Disney. And just kind of everything that uh, happened prior to me um, officially working for Disney. Even... Uh, briefly getting into my uh, trip to Canada, which ironically that year was the very first year I ever filmed in Canada, believe it or not. I actually asked if I could film in a Tim Hortons and they said no. I guess they're copyright protected. The, Canada has very different rules than America on YouTube and America for the most part just does not care. I guess because so many Americans uh, believe in uh, like doing TikTok and stuff like that, and most Americans just go, <laughs> but you know. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next vlog, and always remember you can do all things through Christ strengthens you. Have a great night. Peace out.